So I thought I'd start a little series all about knots on the channel, so that way you guys can get a little bit of an idea of what it is that I'm tying on to these baits in the different situations that I'm in. Today's video, what we're gonna start with is my go-to, reliable, 100%. I mean, if I had to pick and, if I had to choose a knot that I could only tie for the rest of my life, it would be the Palomar knot. Palomar, Palomar, pale, you know, whatever, however you wanna say it. The Palmore knot is the go-to reliable knot that most pros, and I think a lot of people who've been fishing for a long time, are using. So, because this knot is so versatile, you really can tie every single bait in your arsenal on with the Palmore knot and get away with it. Are you gonna get the best action on small jigs? Are you gonna get the best action on crankbaits in topwater? My personal opinion, no but it's a reliable knot. You're not gonna lose those baits. Um, so what I would recommend, the, the areas, or excuse me, the baits that you fish on and tying on a Palomar knot, absolutely gonna be your topwater frogs, 100%. I mean, it's thick cover, thick grass mats. You're gonna need a little bit uh, a strong knot to make sure when you're ripping and pulling on those fish, you can get them out of there. Same thing when you're going for big hook sets. You know, weed guard jigs, hair jigs, uh, bladed jigs. Definitely, definitely my Texas rig. I won't tie anything else on my Texas rig. And honestly, I really don't tie anything else on any of these baits that I just showed you, except what I will do occasionally on a weed guard jig and a bladed jig or a hair jig or you know a, a shaky head or whatever is I will tie a Rapala knot with a little loop on it. We'll get into that a little bit later in the series just to give that a little bit more action. But if I don't need a little bit more of a finesse tactic and I'm just straight going, you know, I know these fish are gonna eat this or like I said, it's heavy cover, trees, sticks, bushes, weed mat, you know, whatever. I'm tying that Palomar knot because I need to get that fish on and I need to get him out of there as quick as I can and into the boat because more often than not, he's gonna be a big daddy to hit that thing. So what we're gonna do, and so you guys know uh, the terminology as we're talking, our main line here is your line off your spool, and then you have your tag end of your main line. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the tag end of our main line, and we're gonna push it and run it right through the eye of our bait. Our hook, our bait, whatever you're using. Pull a little slack out the other side, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that tag end and we're gonna go straight back through the way we came through the eye. What that's gonna give us is it's gonna give us a loop on one side, and it's gonna give us our main line and our tag end of our main line on the other. Once you guys are there, you're gonna wanna grab the loop in one hand and both the main line and tag end in the other. And you're gonna make a overhand knot right around both, with the loop, right around both the main end and the tag end. And when you pull that down, go ahead and pull it down just tight enough to where if you really needed to, you could loosen it back up but just tight enough to get this out of the way, but we don't want to cinch it down tight yet. So what you should be left with at this point is pretty much just an overhand knot around your eye, the main line and the tag end of your main line on this side, and a loop, right? So what we're gonna do with this loop is we're gonna take it around the entire bait. So you're gonna run that whole bait, whatever it is that you're using to tie on, straight through that loop, okay? So now you're here, what I want you to do is I want you to bring that loop up. This is very important that you bring this loop up so that way when we cinch that down, it cinches here on top and it doesn't cinch down low because that's gonna be a problem. That is not gonna be how we wanna finish this, this knot. We want this knot to finish with this pulling tight, straight down through here and cinch that like that. So here, let me see if it's gonna let me do this at all. I don't think it's gonna let me pull this tight even a little bit. It's just, 
It's just the material we're using to demonstrate this. So at this point, what we would do is we would, you know, lube this up and we would pull on our main line end and our tag end line. And that would bring this loop straight down to the top of this. So what this would look like if I was actually able to pull this tight is this would be coming down and it would be pulling down and it would lock straight over the top of this. It wouldn't be because we pulled it up and remember that's a very important step. It won't be down here, it won't be here, it won't be here, it will be up over cinching this single overhand knot down. That way when we pull, what makes this knot so reliable and actually really cool is it, it's, a, it's friction that works against itself. So not only do you have two lines here on your eye as opposed to one, so when you're setting the hook on a big fish or you're pulling a fish out of cover, you have two lines attached to your hook instead of just one that can break. But what it also is doing is it's making so the harder you pull, the tighter and tighter and tighter this cinches down on that knot. So, I mean, this knot is, it's great. It's like I said, super, super reliable. Um, let, let's go ahead and get into the, the demonstration with the fishing line. That way I can show you guys what it looks like finished. All right, so here we go. Let's jump into this demonstration with a real lure and real line. So this is just the topwater frog and some 17 pound fluorocarbon. And what we're gonna do is it's the same exact thing. We're gonna take the tag end of our main line and we're gonna run it straight through the eye of our hook or bait. We're gonna pull some slack out and I highly recommend if this is y'all's first time doing this, that you pull a little bit more slack out than you think you'll actually need because it's gonna help you finish this knot if you're not used to working with it. So take that tag end after you pull just a little slack out the other side and push it straight back through the other side of the eye. So now what you're left with is that same loop here and your main line and your tag end on the other side. So just as we did earlier, we're gonna take and we're gonna tie a simple overhand knot around both the main line and the tag end of the main line. And then we're gonna take that loop and we're gonna put it straight around the whole bait. Okay, so as you can see with line here, this is a perfect example. So do you see that loop, how it just wants to kind of fall down there? And if I were to cinch this tight, what would happen right now is this, this loop would pull up and it would sit at the bottom of this eye and we don't want that. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we pull that loop up over the top of this knot That way when it is sitting up, it looks like that. So you should have your simple overhand knot down low, not cinched tight yet. And then you should have this loop that is going, this is tough to show, this loop that is going up and around both your tag end and your main line, okay? Once we have that, we're just gonna go ahead and get a little lubrication. Most people use spit. I guess you could use water. I'll be honest with you guys, I pretty much tie these knots in my mouth. That way I don't take any chance of getting any heat stress or anything while I'm cinching that knot down the top. So that lubrication just really is gonna help you not put any heat stress in that line and cause you problems in case you know you set into a big fish and you got a heat stress spot right there and it breaks off. So once we're here, you know, I usually just grab my hooks or grab a good section of the bait where I'm not gonna get stabbed and I'll pull on both my main line and my tag end at the same time and just make sure that's nice and tight. And you can see it too. You guys are probably having a tough time seeing it there, but you can see everything is cinched down tight and that main loop that we pulled around the whole bait is up over top, coming down on top of that knot. Once we're there, 
Let's go ahead and cut it. You can cut it as close or far if you'd like on uh, something like a scum frog, honestly. I usually leave, I don't know, maybe a couple millimeters there. I'm not as worried about it on a frog presentation as I am a worm presentation. So a worm presentation, you know, I might cut that down to there and just leave a little bit. But you do want just a little bit of that tag end poking out because like I mentioned before, the harder and harder we pull on this knot, the tighter and tighter this loop cinches on top of all of that. So there you guys go, that's the Palomore knot. Pretty simple, pretty easy. You know, it's, it's a two-step knot, lickety split, boom, and you're ready to go. I mean, I use this knot in 85 to 90% of situations, especially when I'm going for big fish in big cover, heavy cover, sticks, bushes, you know, whatever. Um, don't be afraid to tie this knot on to other presentations if you guys just want to give it a try. I mean, if I don't want to lose a lure, this is what I'm, this is exactly the knot that I'm tying on. I've got more confidence in this knot than I do any other knot that I tie. And hands down, 100%, don't think that I've broken this knot off when I've tied it properly, ever. So if you guys like today's video, stick around for the next ones that we've got coming out. Hit that subscribe button. So we got a few more of these knot videos coming out that you guys aren't gonna wanna miss. All right, I'm Mike G. This is Largemouth Blast. Thanks for sticking with us. Thanks for supporting us. I really appreciate it. It means a whole lot. But we're out of here for today, and I'll see you in the next one.